everybody, I'm Lisa Young Sutton and I've been getting a lot of box spread questions lately so it's time for another box video. Now I am going, well I'm going to use the, uh, the little Grand Tableau Lenormand Oracle Cards deck for this. Um, I'm going to try something different today and I think this is really going to hit home for many of you. What I want to do is I want to draw um, nine cards and lay them in the order that I tend to look at them when I interpret a box spread. And as I do, I'll explain the roles that these positions play within the spread. Okay? So this is going to be a two-part video to give you all a chance to interpret the spread I'm about to lay, right? I want you all to create a story. And in part two of this video, I'll offer a sample story of my own and I will answer any questions that come up or um, uh, comment on any of your stories that you share. Uh, so you can comment here underneath the video or you can comment under the video post on Facebook. Okay. Oh, I should mention that I have no idea what this, uh, what story these cards are going to tell and I don't even have a seeker in mind yet I thought that would kind of be part of the fun of this right just to pull nine cards and let the cards speak right so here we go let me get get the uh, the space ready here all right so I always start my story at the beginning right so this is position one and the story is starting with loss, lack, worry about what's missing or what's eroding or the feeling of deprivation or regrets, right? Yeah, okay. Now the next card I look at is the center card. And the center card, which is position five, we have the heart, right? So, <laughs> I'm laughing because it's, I was just going to say, it's the heart of the story. Position five is, is what's at the core or heart of the story. And at the heart of the story, we have the heart. So, what this story revolves around is emotion and desire. Okay? The next card I look at is the last card, the exit card, position nine. And we got the tree. All right, so what I can say already is that this story ends in stagnation. It ends in slow growth. It ends in um, striving to thrive, right? So that means that after we read this um, whole spread, after we lay all nine cards and read the whole uh, story, that this we're still going to be ending here. We're still going to be ending... Um, in kind of like a standstill, right? But the other cards are going to fill in all the details. The other cards are going to explain what's going on and, and they'll describe like why the seeker is, is stuck here or, or what they're doing about it or how they're reacting to it, right? So, you know, even though the, I call this my primary diagonal, I still need all these other cards. Otherwise I could have just laid this. Right, all right, all right. Okay, so the next card I always look at is the hidden issue space. That's space seven, and I just drew the fish for that. All right. So um, this is the like the underlying issue of the story, and we can say it's money or assets or the freedom to flow and exchange and add value to, to your life. So that's, that's the hidden issue here. I then want to see what's directly influencing this. So I want to draw card, look at card uh, in position four. And I just drew the lily, right? So the lily is said to bless the card below it. So if the lily is blessing the fish, what well, that simply means that something good will happen to the fish, but but in a slower, more passive way. We we can also say that there's no wrongdoing regarding finances because the lily shows honesty and purity, and it's it's influencing this, 
right? Um, okay. Now, oh, the lily is also the card of waiting for something to mature, right? It's a passive card of temperance. And I'm noticing a polarity between these two cards because the fish can describe excess and the lily is influencing it with moderation. Mm, I'm also noticing a correlation between the, the lily and the tree, right? Because, um, you know, regarding patience, right? Um, the, the lily is a calm and wise kind of patience, whereas the, the tree is a more frustrating patience. It's that boring waiting for something to reach a healthier state kind of patience. All right. Now this leads me to want to see what's on the other side of the center card. What is the, um, or what's mirroring the lily? So I'm going to pull the uh, card for position six and I get the, I get the scythe. Okay. Wow. So that's another polar opposite, isn't it? <laughs> the, the scythe is the card of threat and risk and abrupt decisions and uh, final straws, radical actions, and the threat of separation. Mm. And what is it threatening? What's it pointing to? It's pointing to the heart. So it's threatening what the seeker desires. But you can also describe this as it's pointing to this card. And what do I mean by that? I mean that I'm, I'm saying that what the seeker is feeling is a sense of urgency to act based on emotions rather than wisdom. Oh, I like that. All right. So now I'd like to see what's influencing this sense of urgency. So I'm going to draw the, the uh, position three card and I get the whip. <laughs> and that makes a lot of sense from all the story that's already forming in my head. Wait, is this, should I move this up? All right. There we go. Okay, so we got the whip. Um, so the whip is the card of struggle and conflict and disagreements with others. And for my law of attraction followers, if the lily is, a, is the card of allowing, the whip is the card of assertion, right? Which is the opposite. It's the opposite of allowing, right? You're trying to assert, you're trying to force something here. Um, and which one is in a stronger position, the lily or the whip? Well, you know that the cards above are stronger than those below and the cards to the right are stronger than the cards to the left. So this in both ways is stronger than this. So it's a stronger influence. All right. Now think about why the whip appears in a spread. It says the seeker isn't getting along with someone or is battling something within themselves as when you, um, like part of you feels a conflict with what another part of you wants or thinks. Right? So when the whip is in a spread, the status quo has been disrupted. Right? The, the whip is the opposite of agreement and cooperation and harmony. So we got lots of opposites in this spread. I'm seeing a lot of something else. I'm already seeing um, a lot. Oh my gosh. All right? So we, have, we, we already have seven cards down and uh, five of them have something in common. Do you know what that is? I'm going to mention it at the end. All right. So now we only have two cards left and they are the cards that show what's influencing the, the heart of the story and what's um, at the foundation of it, right? What's at the basis of it, right? So let's see what's influencing the center card. And I get, ooh, cool. All right, I get change is influencing the center card. Okay, so that's so position two, we have the stork. So we know that change is influencing what the seeker desires and how the seeker feels. Um, we also know that this change is happening because of what's it coming from this, the, the mice card, right? So we know that this change is happening because of anxiety about loss or deprivation. So we now know what's influencing the heart of the story. Um, the only thing we have left to look at is what's underlying this change of heart. And we get, <laughs> we get the clouds. Okay. So, um, yeah. All right. 
So we can say that we got the clouds in, in position eight, right? So the change of heart is built upon confusion and uncertainty. The clouds brings unpredictable outcomes and, and can show fear or doubt, right? Because of, because of its unpredictable nature. Um, and this explains a lot about what I'm already seeing in this um, the little story that's forming in my head here. All right, so let's just uh, recap the roles played by these positions uh, quickly. The cards are above are influencing cards below. At the same time, the cards below are holding them up. They are what's creating the foundation that this story is built upon, right? I mean, when something influences, it makes an impression on something, right? And sometimes I use the word impact, and we were just talking about this um, online the other day somebody asked this question an impact is more of a collision right and i tend to use the word impact when i'm working with a purely positive or negative card rather than one from any of the three uh, neutral categories um, which you'll find in my book right um you know i list my uh, positive cards the positive neutrals the neutrals the neutral negatives and the negatives right so um when I'm dealing with a purely positive or negative card, like here, this is purely negative card, right? So that's impacting this card. This is another purely negative card that's impacting this card, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, um, so we also know that we read from left to right. So the story progresses from left to right. It also progresses from top to bottom diagonally. Now think about that. Why is this the primary line rather than this? Right? Why is card one, five, and nine? Why does that make up the primary story rather than these, uh, this last column? Well, because we read left to right. <laughs> we read left to right, but we're also moving from top to bottom. So if you're moving from top to bottom and left to right at the same time, that sends you this way. That sends you in this diagonal line right okay there you go so let me just say then that without forming a complete story yet just you know speaking from the primary vibes of these cards I can say that my pri primary diagonal shows worries and uh, deprivation uh, which is influencing emotions and feelings, right? Which is leading to um, this story ending in a, a, like an unhealthy state. And this is definitely an unhealthy state without doubt. It's got the dark side of the clouds facing it and it's being influenced by directly by the um, side above. That's definitely an unhealthy state. Um, and an example of the vertical interaction would be like if we look at this final column, we could say that conflict and discord is um, causing the seeker to feel threatened by a sense of urgency to act based on an unhealthy, stagnated state of not knowing which way to go or how things will turn out. That's adding the clouds into that. All right, so before I wrap up part one, um, I didn't mention earlier uh, what all these uh, cards had in common. I said five of the seven cards I had um, had something in common, and then I added two more cards. So now, I mean, if you look at this, seven of these nine cards all have something in common, and what is that? They all have court insets. Oh, my gosh. And of all of these court, there's a lot of masculine energy in this um, because we have two kings and only one queen. Now, jacks can go either way. Right, but we, we do have four, wait, oh no, we have, oh my gosh, we have three, wait, no wait, we have three kings, we have three kings and only one queen. So lots of masculine energy, and then we also have three jacks, which like I said, they can be male or female, the jacks. Um, but if you look at any of the card pages um, in the book, here. Okay, here, I'm just open to the clouds, right? Any, any of the um, card, cards that have a chord inset, you will see a description of that inset, all right? This is um, in the book, okay? So that is describing, like here, the king of clubs. This is describing the character traits, personality traits of the king of clubs, okay? 
All right. So now what I would like you to do is create a story, right? So you're going to take these cards and create any story that you want based on these cards and their positions. And after you establish your main story by working through the core functions, primary vibes of these cards, right? After you create your, your main story, you can then go back in and, and you can, if you choose, you can make these core insets characters in your story, or you can use them to describe character traits of the seeker. All right, character traits, personality traits, you know, what, what's he thinking, that kind of thing, right? Then you can go in and knight cards, which gives you three card combinations, right? Like if you knight the clouds, you unite it to the mice and the whips, and now you have three cards that give you, add a nuance to the story, right? And you can also mirror cards for cause and effect details, right? Right, you would mirror the mice with the whip and um, and the tree and the fish. Right, those are all mirrors. Okay. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. As always, now go play with your cards. Bye bye.